<clears throat> yeah, I think my dream would be if I could pay, if I can get to the point where I make enough money that like, because there are so many people with the, when I did SSBM rank and when I did the Melee on me blog, um, I didn't like have that much money, but I actually paid out the editors and some of the writers and I wrote letters of recommendation um, for a lot of people that contributed to the early SSBM rank. And I helped them interview for their first job. So there are a lot of people that through SSBM rank actually got their first jobs. Um, and maybe I can, um, with the next generation of like people who are passionate about content, um, maybe there is an avenue where I can bankroll them. Um, I, so the hard part is, like, that's a really tough question, right? Like, is, like, how do people begin TOing? Um, I think a large part of it is, um, there's a concept in, like, so I'm working at a startup, right? And the CEO of a startup can be their own worst enemy, right? Because, um... The hardest part for a lot of CEOs is that, like, um, they're overpassionate about the product that they don't, um, if you're gonna run a company, you can't be in charge of everything, right? Um, and that's where a lot of uh, companies fail, is, um, when, um, the CEO's taking on too many hands-on things and they're not delegating to someone elsewhere, right? So, like, <clears throat> I honestly think, um, if we're gonna look more long-term, um, the end goal of every TO should be that <clears throat> the term, the local tournament, regional major that they run in their respective regions should be able to run almost autonomously without that person, right? So, like, for example, like, Jogle Guy, like, granted, like, he created a brand with, um, with Big House. He has a full staff of people from... He has a full staff of people from from Michigan that can single-handedly run the logistics of the tournament without him being there, right? And that should be your goal, right? I wouldn't really... And I think if every TO had that mindset of, like... The, the idea is to fire yourself, meaning that, like... As you have these tasks, you want to you wanna fire yourself, meaning that like it's off your hands, it's no longer your responsibility. There is a person that you trust that may not do it 100% to your level or like do it exactly what and how you would do it, but you need to get to a place where like the tournament runs without you, right? And figuring out how to get... I mean, there's a lot of people that I think Maybe I don't know your region specifically, but I imagine there are people that aren't top players that are interested in this stuff. And they could be top players too. And that, that'd be great. Um, and here's what you do, right? In the beginning, because there's going to be some people that just don't have money, right? And to make it enticing, right? Uh, it might be as simple as, hey, like, we will pay, like, maybe charging, like, a dollar more for, um, for venue fee, and the money is gonna go towards, and then you message it as, like, the money will go towards staff, right? I think it's a very reasonable cost. Of course, you're gonna get a little bit of, um, some unhappy fans that, it, that your venue fee raised one dollar, but, meh. It's your venue. But you allocate that budget and go like, hey, like if you want to volunteer or get your um, your fees waived, um, you can be a pool volunteer or you can do X, right? Whatever task that you want to train somebody in and delegate, um, you in the beginning, <clears throat> you offer free venue. And you go like, hey, like I will help you out. Um, it's not that hard. I mean, a lot of it isn't like... like I mean, it's, it's a responsibility, but it's not like... It's not something that's, like, gonna be overly complicated either, right? Like, um, let's be honest, like... Tiong is a very stressful job, but, like, the individual tasks that you can delegate aren't the most... They're not... It's not like doing calculus or something. 
So, anyway. Um, you find people that, at the very least, like, are willing to, like, spend part of their tournament experience to TO because it, you, you're giving them, I don't know, a venue discount, right? And then you work with them, you teach them, and see if it's interesting to them, right? And then you kind of develop your leadership from there. Or you can just simply if, um, just post to be like, hey, like, does anyone want to learn how to TO or... Um, and just post in your Facebook group or wherever your Discord Facebook group and see who's interested and then just see what happens in there. That's the strategy I would use. Okay, let's but yeah, so those are the kind of just like the ideas I have in the top of my head. Fortunately, like when I was a TO, I actually TO'd once upon a time, which a lot of people don't know about. But um, for me, um, I was fortunate that because of like Sheridan, Bobak, and all of them, um, that when I ran a NorCal tournament, and granted, like I had my hands on certain things, like um, I, I didn't really have to like, I just had to make sure the venue was set up. Um, that things were clean, that things broke down nicely. Um, I would print out rule sets and do little things, like I would help, um, I would talk to parents who were unsure of, like, like, should my kid be at a random smash tournament to, like, making sure people felt comfortable, right? Like, I was being a host, basically. Um, but a lot of, um, the work of the bracket itself wasn't done by me. Um, I just made sure I was the best host possible, like, I would make sure that every- that I said hi to everybody, I would make sure that, um, if it was someone's first time, I would give them a brief tour of the venue, and then I made sure that they knew that they could ask me if they had any questions, um, and that was, like, my main function was to make sure that people had a good time and that they were comfortable. Um, funny enough, I, yeah, I had to- I had to talk to parents, right? Because some people would enter the tournament and their parents were skeptical because, it's, I mean, rightfully so, right? You're, it's it's a tournament with strangers. Um, and I would talk to them and I would make sure that they felt okay with it, leaving their kid. Most of the time it was a son, because uh, uh, Melee is a very male-dominated... But yeah. I have like zero badges, this is so rough. Oh, speak of the Monkas. Yeah. I mean I think it's like from the lens of like I think sometimes it's like actually good to look at your tournament from a different angle, right? Yes, it's a tournament, but it's also, like, an event, right? And, like, think of it from the realm of an event and being a person that's going to an event. Like, how do you, you as an event goer, like, what, like, how would that, how can we make your experience better as an event goer? And I think thinking of it from that kind of lens, like, has helped me a lot. Oh, I'm dead. <clears throat> yeah. Honestly, um, I think um, even like graphics, like, <laughs> thank you. Um, <clears throat> because of graphics, right? Like the top eight graphics and like as long as you have your brand guide for graphics, right? Like, you're just kind of photoshopping a little bit, right? So I think it's fine if you go with a guy that's passionate or reliable, right? Because um, you end up eating the cost of somebody not uh, flaking, right? Because you're the one that's managing that person, right? And managing people who are flaky just sucks. Like, just straight up. Yeah, but the flip side of it is they're not—they're not managing the flaky person, right? Like you, you're holding the burden of 
managing a person that is being late, or that isn't showing up or not being responsible. Yeah, you can go homegrown. But at the very least, if you want to rebrand, like, then you can get a guy that specializes in this stuff. But chances are, like, um, chances are a lot of the work that you guys have is based on Photoshop. But yeah, delegate is like the most important thing you learn as an adult. I mean, your your time is valuable, right? Um, and this is like the one thing that like I just emphasize to people who are like transitioning out. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad. I was trying to beat strat. Um, I mis I, I miscounted the number of lines. But yeah, your biggest jump from your twenties to your your early 20s to your late 20s is learning how to like manage your time. Um, I was trying to beat it, but managing your time and buying the biggest like life. And I've, I've been trying to figure out like how I could turn this into a book, right? Because the time versus money equation is like the biggest thing that we have to deal with and how we is like one of the low key kind of drivers of our decision making, right? <clears throat> um, I use this analogy all the time, right? If you are if you are a broke college student, right, uh, waiting waiting three hours to get a free Chipotle burrito is a very enticing endeavor, right? You can probably think of like tons of college kids that would spend their whole like n nighttime to get a free Chipotle burrito, right? Because the time versus money uh, equation indicates that um, you don't have you have all the like. Money is a precious commodity for you, but um, time isn't, right? So, like, you don't have a high value for time. And, and that's why you're willing to wait um, hours for free lunch. But, like, if you're, like, 30, like, like, just think of, like, like, is waiting for um, that amount, like, waiting for 10, like, 3 hours for a $5 burrito worth it? Like, like, that is just like you're not evaluating your time in that scenario like and i would just be like yo like is your time really worth two dollars an hour right if a chipotle burrito at that time was uh six bucks it's a little bit more expensive now granted um like do you want to give up three hours of your time for um for two dollars an hour, right? You'd be like, no, like my time is valuable. It's not worth that little. Um, and that's where, like, I think the principles of being willing to delegate will come in, right? Because when you have all the time in the world as a kid, you're willing to take on all the tasks of um, of like doing everything for like a tournament, right? But like over time, like you have a job. Um, you know, jobs are stressful, so you want to relax, right? So, like, your, your question will be, like, how do I buy myself time to relax and stuff, right? And so that becomes enticing, right? Because, like, anything that can buy you time, whether it's, like, being able to find time to relax, to play a video game for another hour, like, that becomes more important that you're willing to spend money or delegate or do something so that you can buy back that time. And I think that's like, that's like one thing that a lot of people don't realize is like, so let's like, um, it's just like the importance of like fighting for your time. Um, so you get a, so in this, I'm getting a attack bonus. So if you see, like, look at how many people are targeting me, and you get an attacker's bonus every time you send a line. So if there's over five people attacking you, um, or like if there's more, like two people attacking you, you will get a multiplier bonus. And if you look, I'm getting this many because um, 
there's just so many people attacking me that I'm just getting I'm just abusing a bonus. So essentially it's because I have so many people attacking me that I'm um getting all these um bonuses. So <clears throat> So there are occasional things that like I view as luxury spends, but like I, I do it because Yeah, no problem. Have a good one. But yeah, to kind of go on my talk, right, like um, when I was younger, I never knew why people paid for a gym trainer, right? And then I'm in my life state where I just don't have the mental energy to spend to have to figure out like what is the most optimal workout for me. Um, and like I don't want like I want to have the luxury of being able to walk to a gym and just have somebody tell me what to do because for me to fully plan a gym routine like in the track all that like <clears throat> that actually requires a lot of time and effort and mental energy that i just don't have um and so that's why i go to orange theory right um it's like nine dollars a class but they have a workout preset for me like they have automatic tracking through a heart rate monitor um and i can just show up um do what they tell me and then just track my progress right and to me i'm like that's that is an awesome enough service for me that I'm willing to pay for it. Uh, younger me would be like, that's such a waste of money, like, you can just look up online, um, you know, what, what to do, right? Like, you can, you can get that for free. But, like, even if it's free, like, there's a lot of time and research and effort that I have to do to tap into that as, like, a resource, if that makes sense. Um, so... I'm starting to get why people pay for services, is just pretty much what I'm getting at. The most extreme example, right, is like, <clears throat> once you get to a certain, like, standard of living, it's like, I don't know, if you're Bill Gates, right, like, I'm sure your time Maybe unless you specifically like the thrill of going grocery shopping, like you probably make so much money that it's actually you're actually probably losing money by grocery shopping if you're Bill Gates, right? Because like, like you could be going to a meeting, you know, you can be doing other stuff. But if you enjoy the experience specifically of going grocery shopping, then I guess you can go grocery shopping. I wonder if Radish is uh, learning stuff, because I feel kind of strange. Got it. <laughs> um, yeah.